it's on to me. Like, they knew what I was doing. And, for, and I was, as a kid, I was like, you thought yeah, you were getting I, away I was with get it. away with it, right? And um, <laughs> so it is, it, uh, that, that was an experience. And did, were you and your brother, like, did you guys conceive this yet? Would you talk about that? Like, hey, let's like play the game or play the system? Or was this just more organic and just kind of you guys knew? De- definitely organic. Um, definitely in a sense where um, in a lot that sort of spawns from your parents, right? Because mm-hmm. like if he me- if he messes up, then he's on the shit list. Yeah. And then, hey, CJ, can you go ask mom? Because I want to I want to go here and you probably want to go too. So why don't you just ask him because they'll say yes to you. Um, so you so it spawns out of that going, OK, how can we get what we want? And then I know if I do this, then I got credit over with him if I need him to do something. And um, so, yeah, you do sort of work it like that. And that overflows into schoolwork and stuff like that. You know, he was better with math. I wasn't better with math, so I was like, God, dude, let me get your paper off math. And <laughs> so, yeah, you just do it. Um, and then that, you know, that spawned into, uh, we were like 18 or 19 years old. We were like, crap, dude, you got to be 25 to rent cars now. And I was like, no, nah, dude, I'm going to get the fake ID. And <laughs> my, my buddy looks like me. I'm going to go to the DMV. I went straight to the DMV. It was like, broke my license. No way. Full, like, I don't know what sort of federal offense that would be. And, um, <laughs> But my buddy trusted me. I was like, dude, I got you. I'll be good, you know? And then I would rock up, put a hat on. I would rent the car because I was over 25. And I was like, but my friend wants to put it on his credit card because uh, I don't have a credit card right now, you know? And yeah. it, was, it, was, it was at that point where people don't have, not everyone has credit cards. And yeah. they're like, yeah, no worries. And then put me as a driver, put it on their hands, and we rent cars. And we went around and rent cars until we turned 25. Damn. And but... But the story with that was, was like, you just learn how to do that. And you learn how to, what is a hurdle I need to get over. And I do have this guy here that, that could help, potentially help me get over it. So I was interested in how, just going back to like, you and your brother working as a team, taking on a system or the tour or, or brands um, t- towards sponsorship. How did that define your relationship between each other when you were either on the same um, same sponsorship or when you were, when you chose different sponsorships like how that affected you guys interpersonally well you know I mean those are good stories right and then the, there are the other side of that coin where Damien would come in some surfing off the wall and I'm like what and he's like dude he's got TNC on his board full Hawaiian tattoos guy wanted to kill me and I'm like great dude you just ruined my necks off the wall surf if that guy's out he's gonna want to kill me too you know and he's like dude sorry I tried to I tried to keep my cool and so there there is the other side of that coin where there's this accountability mm-hmm. that you know you, I just would have never experienced it uh, to that level right. it's could, because like and you can't go out there. I can't tell the moak like, "Oh, that's my brother," and then they just get more pissed off yeah. and they just want to pound you, right? So you just you just sort of put your head down and like, all right, if this guy's gonna get his aggression out, then then I'm the punching bag, and so be it. But I love surfing enough. Um, so there's there's a lot of those other side of the stories where you're just like, it worked against you, or it was mm. like, I got to deal with that because that's that's what I've been given. Um, I don't think I answered your question. No, <laughs> well, that's part of it, but the other one is like, um. In terms of the later on, as you guys were accruing sponsorships, the film really spends a lot of time on like whether you worked well together. Like pack, you could see it from yep. the industry side, mm-hmm. it's like oh, we'll package them as one, or it's better to split you guys up, and like how that process, you know, affected you guys. You know, I don't know if we were just we were trying to figure out what would be the best, you know, and, you, and we didn't have those answers, and and it was. Uh, we did the. It is. I mean, you guys can relate to this. It's yeah. it's frustrating when you, you do something one way and then you do something another way and you get the same result. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And I think for us it was like, gosh, we keep doing these things like expecting a different result. Like, are, are we crazy? You know. And and there, are these sort of like human experiences and it's your life. Um, and uh, it was frustrating. Like I, I think I think it normal normally. I, the normal human reaction would be a little frustrated because yeah. uh, you're trying to do something and you really think it, that you're going to get a different outcome. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, I definitely created some tension and, and there's some steam needed to be released and, and we were, you know, young, so it got released in different ways. Mm-hmm. And 
But, you know, for me and Damien, we, we love surfing so much and, and we love the opportunity that we were given that we never really wanted to disrespect surfing. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to disrespect people. We didn't want to, we didn't want to get out of line. Um, and so we kept a lot of that stuff behind closed doors and it was just like, um, so it was, it was, it was probably amongst just me and my brother, you know, it was just like, uh, we could, it was our it was our problem. Someone else didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> I mean, there's a stark difference in terms of the the scenes in the two films that came out in the last two years yeah. uh, with the Andy film, mm-hmm. him and his brother Bruce, and like the scenes of those guys going after each other. Yeah, uh, and yeah, no, and, and we, you know, me and Damien grew up with them. Like we started doing contests with Bruce and Andy when we were 12 years old, and they're um, so we were very aware of that, you know, um, but we. I they were better than us. I thought they were better than us. I thought they were, you know, way more marketable than us. And I, so I was just like, yeah, they can get away with stuff that that I'm just not good. I'm not good enough to get away with it. And it wasn't like in a sense of like, I just not maybe that's not my personality, but maybe that that's just not my role, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and I don't even know exactly how to put that into words, but that's that's what I thought, and that's that's how I acted. Yeah. Um. I have a fun story. <laughs> well, not really fun. Are we getting too serious right now? No, 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 no. Get no, no, the fun. No, no. loop it back. <laughs> no, it's like um, the moment I realized I would never be a professional surfer. Yeah, everyone has these moments. Yeah. And it was um, this kid, Peter Egan, I used to compete against in the ESA here. And I reached second in New York. It was, it was, it was, it was good in 95. It was a good year. There were waves. I was always bigger the than optimism everyone. optimism was very high. It was very high. <laughs> and... I remember Peter coming back from like the U.S. Championships, and I was like, "Yo, did you, did you see the Hopgood brothers?" And he's like, "Yo, those guys! Oh my god! Just pop, 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 pop! <laughs> Holy shit! They're so good! They just kicked my ass!" And that's when I was like, "Fuck! If they're kicking your ass, I am never gonna be that." <laughs> and I'm like, "I need to find another avenue." <laughs> and it was like really interesting. It was always like. This talk of you of the, this twin duo Hobgoods and like always with a little bit of reverence, a little bit of fear, and a little bit of just like they're machines. Uh, it was <laughs> it was just really interesting and like thank you for setting me on my path, you know, another path <laughs> rather than chasing that goal. But it, it, did you were you aware of that at, at that age? Were you aware of like how good you guys were and and or the level, or did you feel like it wasn't ever enough? Or that you ruined his dream. Well, are you aware that you ruined my dream of being a pro that, that is actually a good, that's a good story because every person has that moment. Yeah. Like, I, like my moment was when I kept surfing against Gabriel and I was like, dude, I just got two 8.5s. I thought I surfed as good as I could surf them. Yeah. And I was nearly in combo land. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, where's the exit door? Like, where the heck is that exit door? I got to find it as quick as I can. Because if this guy is doing this, and I know there's a couple behind him, yeah, you know, Philippe Toledo, now Edolo. we got Idolo, like, man, I look at that thing, I look at the tour right now, and I'm like, I'm so thankful I'm not there, because I would just get destroyed. Yo, when's someone going to tell Slater? <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, it's a, I mean, he's going to prove us wrong, obviously, in yeah. some points of the, of the story or the juncture on some pages, but... Um, he experiences that same thing. Like Gabriel no one, has his number. Yeah, no Gabriel one gets away with that. No. no one gets away with that stuff. And so, yeah, that, that moment happened for me. Just obviously hoping happened a lot later. Um, and then I had another barometer when I was, uh, I think I was like 17 years old. And I remember I was just showering off outside in the hose. And I came in and I just was like, you know, Dad? I was like, tell me if I'm wrong. But I think like right now it goes Andy, Bruce, and then me and Damien. Like, is there anyone else that we can think of that might be... In your generation. Yeah, that I'm not thinking of. And um, and I think if that's the case, we might be able to make it. Yeah. Because I'm getting... I'm, I'm turning 18. I'm going to graduate the next year. So you really got to go. Is it worth the risk? Is yeah. it... You know? And um, so, yeah, that moment... That's sort of where that happened. Um, so in a similar... You know, in a similar sense. Did sure. you, were, was there talk of alternate alternate paths? For, you, for both you and your brother, like besides pro surfing, did you guys explore those options? 
Well, uh, um, we definitely had like an aha moment when we went to Tavarua. We yeah. were like, dude, if we don't make it, we're coming boatmen. We're going to be boatmen in Tavarua. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is the holy That's grail, the right? If I can get here before <laughs> I get married or have kids, then I'll be able to do this. And I'll, then I'll figure out the rest after that. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you, that was, we were looking that at stuff, but that was the, that was the goal at the end of the rainbow right there. And then you got freaking two full page rusty ads after that <laughs> <laughs> cloud break getting barreled and everyone's like, damn, this hot goods charge. <laughs> yeah. But let's put that boatman on, uh, on ice. So, um, but no, dude, those same things that, that everyone else is, is thinking, um, it's just, you know, on a different scale, I guess. Do you, it, it also, it had the appearance that you, both you and your brother were living the life at that age around 17 to 20, 21 going on boat trips, photo shoots with models or women that became your wives, actually. And <laughs> like, you know, and like, it, it always looked very idyllic, you know, and definitely like seemed from afar, like, oh, wow. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I was so jealous. Like, I was just like, wow, these guys are just totally living it up. And like, this must be amazing at like 18, just being paid to travel. It's, um, as I get older, I, you know, you sort of look at surfing, uh, on, you know, sort of higher altitude yeah. and, uh, and I, and I'll look at the eighties and I'll look at, you know, the nineties and the two thousands and then I'll look at where it's at right now. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, dude, yeah. I grew up, it was like, we're in the city right now. Right. So yeah. it's like, I bought these stocks mm -hmm. at the best yeah, possible yeah. time you could. So, so we, we were born into uh, a timing in an in a, in a era where there was more fat on the bone. Yeah. There, was, there was no end in sight. The money was, was more than, than... so, And it happened so quick. So it was like, it was hard to... We, we had, I think, in us, we're like pretty thankful person and thankful people and pretty gratitude yeah. and, and all those things. Um, but I didn't even know, dude. I didn't even know, and I and even to this day, I'm just sort of figuring out how good we had it. Um, but dude, it was it. We lived. The, I mean, when you t you're talking about you lived the dream, I'm on the outside looking back at my career and going, "Holy crap! I lived. <laughs> I lived the fattest you could live." You know, I don't know if musicians do that nowadays. The musicians would look back and go, "That was it, dude. Yeah. It was Motley yeah. Crue and Def Leppard, or it was uh, yeah. That's what I feel." I, I, I imagine a lot of them look back and just be like, wow, like, and it, you know, I can't believe how lucky and how much he had. And, and that was like the peak or that was the ascent of the surf industry. The late nineties was like, yeah, amazing. we were summiting, right? It was totally like it was peaking. And then <laughs> I think 2006 was probably peak surf where you had like Bob McKnight on a commercial for some financial company yeah. in wall street and you know they bought ros quicksilver bought rosinol yeah. and like all these things were just all over the place and surf was so huge and like you guys rode that ascent perfectly in in so many ways and yeah like rusty was flush with money at that time too and had a great team uh it, yeah it was it seemed like you guys yeah you timed it perfectly was it did it seem more challenged i mean you say that like you were in it and maybe you, you didn't have the perspective because that you were just living your life. But was there, did it feel really heavy at the time because the opportunity was, was there bigger, just more fat on the bone. Like you said, there's a, in the movie you talk about, you know, the home, the big home that you bought and then the requirements to keep it all going. Was that like a, just a really intense day to day to day thing? Um, it wasn't. It absolutely wasn't, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of, a, you know, a, a, a gauge or some sort of barometer here. But, like, you know, the people that went through the Great Depression, like, they had things that they, they just look at things differently, right? So I'm born and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm graduate when I'm 18. Like, I'll go and try to make the tour. I'll start in June. It's only going to be a half a year, but I'll get my... Um, seed points up and then I'll and I'll go at the tour the next year and I'll qualify the year after that June to December or June to like November yeah. I qualified yeah it was like you qualified you're in 
you know <laughs> and the, and uh, I remember I was in Brazil and they're like you're in you got enough points and I was like really and they're like but listen if you do a couple more contests and stay here longer in Brazil you can get in the top 10 and so you'll get like seating and right. 